go back to my office and I got your message. So I want to be able to hear from you a little bit more, Mr. Zen. You're saying that you made a report? But I made an anonymous signal mint first of all in last August. And what happened to it? But that's it. Nobody ever got back to me. Elizabeth Puste acknowledged that uh, that it was received by the signal mint hotline. And, uh, I have a question. But when I started talking to Elizabeth Puste, then uh, she acknowledged that uh, they had received those calls and she put it together that it was me and I told her that it was me. So then you guys had the appropriate information to get back to me. Well, because Elizabeth Puste, is, and I don't know if you know, Elizabeth Puste right, was our uh, sort of complaints commissioner. Yes, I, I know. Right? Yes. So the DY, the Department of Youth Protection operates Okay, but so then how would she know about these signal mints if you're separate? How would she I don't know. I don't, unless you told her, I don't know. She, I have she, no idea. She knew about the entire contents of the phone calls before before I explained them to her. So, and who, did you make the, who did you make the report to? I didn't make a report. I left a message because nobody answered the phone. I left, okay. a, num I left a number of messages. But I called Bacha, and it was after hours. And then uh, it said, if you want to make a signal mint, you could uh, you could press the the certain number or something like that. Right. Okay. And that's exactly what I did. And two. I think in the message, sorry, in one of the messages you left me yesterday, you mentioned the name, and that's what I want to clarify. You spoke to Lori Walker. That was a f like maybe two weeks ago or three weeks ago. I spoke to Lori Walker, and I made a signal mint against all the children in the care of Bacha because the Bacha refused to fire somebody or force them to at least deny allegations of sexual abuse and they're currently working for Bacha and like you say the complaints commission refused to take complaints about it and uh, that's it just like they refused to compla take complaints about you from John Ranger so And I would like to know the, the, the other one too, because uh, if they were both not retained, then you have to tell me by law that they weren't retained. Okay, because what I can tell you is I, it's hard for me to speak to the one back in August, because I don't know. I mean, if it was anonymous, we certainly wouldn't have the name or information. But if you're giving information in relation to, you're talking about all the kids in Bashar, is it a particular place in Bashar? Is it uh, 400 kids? What are we talking about? But that's the game, like, since I don't know exactly where the, they put this person to work, I know he was working at Hawkins uh, when I originally made my complaints, but that's, right. the, that's the whole game. Everybody passes the ball to everybody else. The police say, well, it's up to the Crown. The Crown say, well, the police didn't get enough evidence. The complaints commissioner doesn't take the complaints. They say, oh, you could try the DYP. The DYP says, oh, we can't take it. There's okay, no information move, that move, move forward at this point. So a staff stripping a uh, stripping children is the, is not enough to warrant an investigation. Well, with the information we have right now, we're not going to be moving forward with it at this point. We've taken a look at it or looked into it, and there's no information to support at this point that uh, the children, if you're talking in relation to Hawkins, are at risk. Okay, even though I have. Uh, Three other people stating the, the same things anonymously. If they have more specific information or detailed information right now as to how a particular child or children are at risk, certainly we're more than open to receiving it with the information, with the specific details in relation to that. But we'd want to hear from these people, certainly uh, they could call. But with the information we have right now, we've decided or determined at this point that children, and I'm using the group you described, Hawkins, that they're not at risk right 
no information to dictate otherwise than us taking a different course of action. But if there's other people that have other information, certainly they're more than uh, until, and, and probably if they have issues, they should be calling uh, with specific details in relation to a child allegedly being at risk. No question about it. So basically, it doesn't matter that he goes around molesting children. I'm never going to say it. it doesn't matter. What I'm saying is, without getting to, with the information that we have right now, we've determined that there's no avenue or further avenue for us to explore in relation to the children. You're talking about a bad show for us to go any further at this point. But there, there is an avenue to explore. You could refuse to allow him to have any kind of... Uh, work activities until he at least chooses to deny these allegations. If he can't even deny the allegations, then it's then it certainly is a risk to children. Okay, but what I'm saying to you and getting back to your question with information is with what we have right now and where it is in relation to, if you talk about a particular worker, we don't have those concerns right now. Those concerns don't exist. If there's more detailed information or specific, please, I would invite somebody to call and share it with us. But right now, with what we have, uh, we're not going to go further at this point. But what could be more specific than he goes in the cabin and rips children's pants off and laughs at their genitals and sticks his hands in their pants and rubs toothpaste on them and forces them to strip in the middle of nowhere with no witnesses to go strip in the lake while he's doing God knows what on the shore. Like that, none, 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 none of these activities, well, this occurred before, so if it occurred before, it's quite reasonable to believe it would occur again, and it wasn't just me, I witnessed him do it to other children in the cabin as well, so that's, that's more than one child, like, that, that, that's, a, that's a pattern of behavior. And I'm not dismissing it, I'm not dismissing it, this, if this is a pattern of behavior, this certainly occurred, uh, certainly it would be concerning, but with what we have right now, what we have in place in relation to the children that we work with right now, we have no other avenue to go forward with in terms of doing the investigation or evaluation because we've determined with the information that was shared that these children or cho you know, group of children are not at risk uh, right now for a variety of different reasons, but that they're not presently at risk. Okay, so in other words, maybe he's not working with children. But he's still working, and he should still have to face the allegations. Like, did you guys go ask well, him about it? Sometimes, well, sometimes there's a different avenue. People have to face certain allegations. There's other avenues that they can explore, either with the police or through the criminal courts. <laughs> anyway. Okay? But in relation to the report we're talking about that you're making or made, it's in relation to children, and you're using children as plural, more than one, as a group that... There's really no other avenue for us to go forward with at this point because we've determined that the children are not presently at risk. Okay? Yes. But I wanted to get back to you. I know it probably doesn't answer any questions or addresses any of the things that you're raising. But uh, it answers all the questions. It answers the questions that uh, no nobody has the authority to protect the children. And uh, that's... Well, I'm, that, telling you, I'm telling you that... That's, well, that's exactly what the DYP... Right sure that the children are protected right now. Okay, that's fair enough. But the, the last time the DYP told me, like, uh, we're going to protect the children if the law allows us, like, it's ridiculous that there's no, there's no forum that he should be forced to, to face these allegations. I understand the criminal code, you have the right to remain silent. But you know how you shouldn't have the right to remain silent to collect your pay from a, an organization... That, that is there to protect children. That's the bottom line. And I know you're going to say that's not your department or whatever. <laughs> no, I'm not going to say that. I mean, I hear you. And that's why I sort of preempted part of my discussion two minutes ago. Saying I may be getting information that, you know, is not going to help the situation anymore. But it was trying to just give you the information that with what we have presently right now is that uh, we've verified and checked into it that we're not concerned about the children that we're responsible for right now. All right. Okay. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you.